Today, we're going to discuss something a bit different. We're going to start off with what are public goods, the economics of public goods, and how can we use tokens, how can we use this new economic systems and new economic models to affect the public goods that we know. So let's get started. And the case study we're looking at today is the common stack down. Today, we'll cover a few things. We're going to start off with what are common goods, the incentive alignment, the participatory economics, and then I'll introduce you a little bit to the common stack DAO. What are common goods? In the book that I've written, common goods is in the chapter 13, part two. There, we talk a little bit more about different kinds of property rights and different goods attached to that. In general, you can think of goods as two main categories. The first one are private goods, and the second are public goods or common goods, because for everyone to use. Public goods, there is a little bit more of a barrier. You know, you need to fit some certain criteria like a country club, or you need to get memberships to join this space, or you need to have X amount of qualifications or X amount of attributes to be able to join this public goods community. On the other hand, common goods are goods that is for everyone to use, you know, for commoners to use, everyone. You don't need to be a superstar, you don't need to be a supermodel, everyone like you and me, we can just all join and enjoy it. Examples of common goods in the real physical world as their parks and air and libraries, oxygen. These are infrastructures that is given by the world, water, for example, or it could be built by a country system or a nation state like parks and libraries. Everyone gets to use them and everyone gets to enjoy this asset and it's shared with everyone in the system. So that's great. But you know, lesson one in economics is that there's no such thing as free lunch. There's an opportunity cost to everything. So what are common goods? How does common goods fall into this category of no such thing as free lunch? Well, common goods are very difficult to maintain. Look at water, for example. Water is free. Water is free for everyone to use. But look at the oil damage that's there, the oil spills, the water pollution. That's not good. And if you look at who's cleaning up the beaches, who's cleaning up the, the water, who is taking care of these common goods that we have. In general, not many people are doing that because not many people are incentivized to do that. Remember, economics is mainly about incentives and how it affects different people's behaviors. So in that sense, one of the biggest problems with common goods is that there is this incentive misalignment. People are not incentivized to want to take care of things. That brings me to the point of incentive alignment. How do we align the incentives then? Today, you see a lot of volunteers taking care of public goods. You see a lot of non-profit organizations cleaning the beaches, organizing meetups to take care of plants and reduce pollution. That's great because we're part of society. It's time for us to give back because Mother Nature takes care of us. We have to take care of Mother Nature as well. But here's where the problem lies. They're not really incentivized to do that. And non-profit organizations are reliant on donations to do these things. And the incentive is not really aligned. So that's not very fair to these volunteers, for example. So how can we align these incentives? When we talk about incentives, one of the key things that the founding economist in this field, Eleanor Ostrom, she said that the person that has the most incentive to make the right decisions is the person that's most affected at that situation. Given this idea that she won the Nobel Prize for, how can we implement them into these common goods that we are creating? And this brings us to the whole idea of a token-based ecosystem. I'm going to just call it participatory economics. So what is the biggest benefit of these token-based ecosystems? The biggest benefit is that we get to bootstrap the community from a grassroots level and people get to come together and create the assets that we're creating be it a protocol, be it an infrastructure, be it a digital infrastructure, this asset that we are creating are basically common goods. They are digital common goods because anyone can use them. Email protocol, for example, it's a public good and anyone gets to use the email protocol. You get to send email to anyone. So for example, I get a lot of Nigerian princes trying to give me BTC via email. So email protocol doesn't discriminate if you're a scam or not a scam. It doesn't matter. Anyone gets to use them and that's great. When you look back at all these different protocols we're doing, all these dApps we're doing, the DeFi applications, the NFT protocols, the underlying protocols, these are basically common goods that we're talking about. And we've seen that in the physical world, common goods are destroyed because no one has the incentive to take care of them. Today, 
it could be different because we have an incentive to want to take care of them and that is through the token. So participatory economics over here can be taken into action with tokens in a token-based ecosystem. The token is an incentive to affect people's behaviours and encourage them to do good in this public goods that we are creating. So what does that mean? How can we apply participatory economics in a more tangible sense? And that's where I want to talk to you a little bit about Common Stack DAO. So Common Stack DAO is run by Griff, the CEO of Common Stack, and his fantastic background in software engineering and the technical aspect. It is also aligned with token engineering, which is another big, wonderful community focusing on the engineering of these token models. Together, they create this DAO that focuses on building and creating and supporting these public goods, these common goods that's going to be created that will be beneficial to anyone in the ecosystem. How do we do that? Remember that when we are creating economic systems, when we're designing economic models, we're designing tokens, it is all about figuring out the different parameters or different things that can be changed to design and create these ecosystems. And participatory economics is just that people who are in the system are able to participate to make these changes and to make this safe. It sounds like democracy. It sounds like things that you know, right? The only difference or the, the biggest difference is that democracy is different changes after the parameters are set. Here we're talking at a grassroots level from the very basic standpoint. These participants are able to come in to vote and to make changes and to define the design and define the changes that can be done. Then you can make other kind of changes as it grows. This is quite different from a lot of DeFi protocols, for instance, where the DeFi protocols founding team, let's say five to eight people, they decide on what things should be. They have a multi-sig wallet and that is it. Here at Common Stack, it's slightly different because firstly, you, you curate people who have expertise in the space who really know what they're doing so that they have an incentive to want to build a better world by supporting these infrastructures that will be funded. Then these people come together to define, choose and design these different parameters within the ecosystem. Once that's done, that will define the token allocation of everyone in the system. So you have 100% skin in the game. Then this DAO will then be used to fund other different protocols that are aligned to its incentive. So in that way, this is how incentives can be aligned and it's all governed by the token.